before we start the show, I just want to take a moment, a moment in honor of, in memory of, in respect to this borderline reasonable amount of facial hair that now resides <laughs> on my face. <laughs> I had no idea where you were going with it, but as soon as you said borderline, I knew. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. I'm one guy. The guy that's buying a lottery ticket every week has a plan for the time. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And I'm the other. I don't want that win. I want the last 10 minutes back. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. I'm all about some fart filtering. Two guys, one podcast. She's wrong, but let's let's hear what she has to say. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. I'm sorry, what did you think it was? It's what I know it is. Okay. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. Honestly, like, I mean, I, I take a moment. Take, I'm going to get out from behind the mic here. Take a look. Like, how, how long? How long is that taking you to grow that sweet, <laughs> trashy thing on your face? <laughs> listen, listen. I've been, I've been trimming and molding. Uh, manicuring. No, you have not. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes, I have, dude. It looks now, so bad. <laughs> it's terrible. It's still super fucking patchy. But there's hair everywhere, right? You, there's hair in all the places where there's supposed to be hair. There's you look few. like a mutant baby. Or you look like you're halfway through chemo. Your face, your <laughs> no, face got cancer. It's not that. It's not like it's not cancer face. Here's what I... I, I it's cancer face hair. <laughs> I told uh, I told Honey Bun the other day that I look like you don't watch Parenthood, do you? No, but I just want to like right. I'm I am surprised. Like I have seen you in nothing but darkness, really, since it, like the lights weren't on, really at the house. <laughs> it's, right, it's nighttime outside. <laughs> we get in the car. I'm not looking at you. I'm driving. <laughs> right. We get over here walking through the dark. <laughs> we sit down at the table, and there's mics and all kinds of shit in front of us. So it's you. You can't. Yeah, you can't really see I'm your like, face. I'm like boo. <laughs> but man, I gotta tell you, now that I look at it, like it's fucking bad. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> it's not really, no, but it's. I was so proud of it. <laughs> like, no, don't get me wrong. It is great for you. <laughs> Like it, like it, it really is. I don't think I've ever seen this much hair on your face. But There's never been this much hair on my face. Fuck. Here's I told. <laughs> why do you have to? Why, do, dude? Why, why do I have do you, to draw attention to it? No. Why do you have to shave, dude? I want to see what's going to happen to it. No, I don't. I. This is what I like. I don't shave. I trim. Like I because I don't like. I don't want it to be like. Well, like I'm trying to to get it to thicken up. Oh no! Do you so like grow, I keep it manicured? Dude, no, keep it man, manicured. you grow it out like a fucking bush and then trim it how you want it. But it's got to get to that point. <laughs> you got, I gotta let it go. Yeah. Let it go. Let it go. I didn't want to be the only thing that didn't have that that song on it this week. That was a good. That was a good. Good uh, squeeze in right there. <laughs> good drop in. Whoop. <laughs> Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this is the podcast. Welcome to our comedy show. We're two buddies um, with slightly askew views of the universe, and we like to bring uh, some regular segments to you and also our personal viewpoints on uh, the world while we give you a little bit uh, better view of uh, ourselves. There you go. We reveal a little of ourselves each week. I think podcasting is a very intimate art form and um, we're about to get intimate, ladies and gentlemen. I'm I'm naked, so it's, about <laughs> it's, the, it's the only way to pod. Whether whether they're getting intimate with me, I'm getting intimate with them. You're welcome, listener. <laughs> you are welcome. Uh, let's start off with the rundown. Uh, we've got a word of the day. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Oh, we've got a who are these guys. Ah, we may have two who are these guys, depending on time. Uh, We've got, uh, uh, I guess this is going to be breaking news. All right. There you go. I've got a Southern Comfort. I love it. Uh, Then we're going to put a a bow on it with a word from Bob Ross. We may or may not have an if you could. Always tasty. There you go. All right. uh, First of all, 
Uh, let's start things off with a word of the day. In case uh, you're a new listener, the way that we do this is uh, every week we bring you a 1920s slang phrase or word uh, that we think needs to come back into use. And uh, we'll, we'll be bringing back 80s words next time. 80s, when we get through this list, you're going to... Psych! No, I don't. <laughs> That's, we have to leave something for our children to do when they take over the podcast. They'll be doing 80s words. Uh, uh, so here's so I'll give you the word or phrase, and then that'll be the word of the day. We'll give you the definition. We'll use it in a sentence for you. And then sometime during the podcast, one of us will try to use it seamlessly. Whoever does or will, shoehorn will win. It. Yeah, or, or squeeze it in uh, in a shoehorned way, yes. This week's uh, word of the day. Tell it to Sweeney. Uh, that means I don't give a fuck. Uh, what you say when you believe something to be untrue. Uh, it, you might also say, oh, well, if you buy that, I got, you know, some, I don't know, what's the, I got a bridge to sell you? I don't know. What's the, I got farmland in arizona i don't know there's a thing what's the phrase george Strait wrote a song about it i have i don't have a clue you don't know the what's the cliche about if you, you when you're gullible you say i've got something i've got land somewhere to sell you i've got what's the fucking cliche i feel so stupid now that i can't think of this you but you don't know what i'm talking you don't even know what i'm talking about i don't have a reference Okay. <laughs> All right then. Well, <laughs> maybe maybe sounds you, sounds like you did it perfect. Maybe we're that gullible. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell it to Sweeney. What you'd say when you believe something to be untrue? If you want to call bullshit, you say ah, tell it to right, Sweeney. It's a parking lot story. Yeah, yeah. The, right. There you go. This is a much better version of our. Uh, it's a parking lot story. Which, by the way. And I don't remember the episode. You can go back in the archives and find it. But if you have not heard that story, you got to go back and find it. It's when it's old news. It's an old, old episode where we discuss. I think the best retirement of all time turned out to not be true. And and now that's our phrase for something that we don't believe. It might change after this episode too. Tell it to Sweeney. Uh, so that's our word of the day. We'll try to use that whenever we can. You sir. Had a, a who are these guys? Yeah, you want to start. That's how you want to start. I, that's how I want to start the show. All right, I, my who, my who are these guys? My my bearing of my soul was my facial hair, which you derided. Uh, already at the beginning of the Man. show, so. but I honestly, not to not to turn back to me before we go into you, but just you know to put the focus back on me. Um, I really, I swear to God, I'm in the mirror the other day and I'm trimming and I'm shaving, like you know, like I shave my neck, Dude, you know, like I shave like, all of this here, like just you say, you saying just, just let it go. Just, well, no, I'm saying j- let's just stop talking about it because it literally looks like something Godzilla would fight. <laughs> Go, Jira! Oh man, Brian Cranston's gonna start yelling through the glass of the studio like an apocalypse is coming, you bastards! Yeah, yeah. No, I. You know what's funny? My father, who since I was a child has worn a full beard. Yeah, he's got a man beard. He's got a real man beard. Was never able to grow one until he was honest to God. 32 years old. Really? And so, and just one day, he had a beard. Man, he's got a good, yeah, he's got a good looking face covering there. And it was pretty scraggly when it started, so I have hope. I have hope. But you're right. He had to, he had to go full, like, Duck Dynasty. Yeah. And then, and then he could trim it back to reason. That's what you gotta do. That's the, that's the secret. <sighs> All right, then. I gotta, I gotta, I, I, I uh, Dazim Adele it. <laughs> that was terrible. A terrible reference okay. or your burp? Both. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's get into this. Yes. I've been trying to clean a closet out for like three days, right? Cleaning out my closet. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, the wife and I share a closet. It's a walk in closet. It's a good sized closet. You have shit in that closet? Uh, dude, it was terrible. <laughs> but not only that, like there was so much laundry to do. Right? right, right. So it's took it's taken me three days. At which stage at your house does the laundry land? Because at mine, we're real good at washing it. 
We're very, very good at washing it. Oh, yeah. We're very, very good at drying it, mostly. That's so great at folding it. We're the worst people in the world. I got... I, you know how you know how Jay Z's got racks on racks on racks. I got I got socks on socks I, on socks. I got no. I got hampers on hampers on hampers. <laughs> I, like I literally sometimes I go to the store to buy a new hamper so I don't have to fold some laundry. <laughs> That's terrible. I got, I got it stacked up. Just wear more clothes. <laughs> That's the hobo answer. Yeah. I got it. I got it stacked up Layer. on top of each other. Like you know, like think. Think the think the Jim Carrey remake of How the Grinch Stole Christmas at the end when he's climbing up the mountain with the Who's shit all piled up on the that's what my laundry looks like. Right but on. clean, you know. Till the dog pushes it over. I couldn't do that. Shit would drive me crazy, right? It bothers me, I just not enough to do it. So I've been working on cleaning this closet for three days. Okay. Right? We've got suitcases in there that I move into the spare room, all all that stuff. I want it to look I just want it to look organized. I want it to look like a fucking closet. Right. And not a storage space that happens to have clothes in it. <laughs> right? Like an episode of Storage Wars waiting to yes, happen. Yes, yes. So it's three 25, days. 25, 25, give me 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 40, 40, 40. Yep. <laughs> I, would, I would have paid someone to actually take it all out for me. But for three days I've been working on it. And I, find okay. I move a suitcase. And under that suitcase is a giant ball of dresses. <laughs> I was like, okay. I know since we're talking about your wife's closet and you've already established that there was a lot of laundry, dresses was the most normal thing to expect to be there. But I, I, I literally 25 things ran through my mind that you might could have found under oh, the suitcase. Oh, no, dude, I threw away like old Halloween costumes. <laughs> like I'm like, Queen of Hearts, going in the trash. See, I was thinking, like, I found a rat king under the suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would have loved that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so so I, it's this big ball of dresses. I'm in a pretty good mood, right? Like, I've, I feel fucking productive. Okay. I don't want to ruin these dresses, so I'll call my wife. and like, hey, I've, I found these dresses. I want to wash them, get everything done. I'm trying to clean all this out. How do you want me to wash them? I don't want to ruin them. And she tells me, so I wash it. But part of this is they cannot be dried in a dryer like i have to hang dry these things right Mm -hmm. no problem but as i'm hanging these motherfuckers man one at a time my anger just starts building (laughs) so this is you're you're telling me that this is like the abusive husband version of he loves me he he loves me not like you're like peeling the flowers off and he she loves me she loves me not except you're hanging the dresses up and you're like i'm gonna fucking stab her i'm gonna (laughs) slit her throat (laughs) yeah i'm gonna run her over with my car yeah i'm I'm gonna bury her in the backyard i'm just getting pissed right because what's going through my head dogs yeah exactly (laughs) because what's going through my head right is this is what i'm thinking like she doesn't even care about these clothes. She just throws them on the ground. How long have they been here? How long right. has it been since they've been washed? Or how long has it been since she's worn it? How wasteful, obviously how she neglectful. Obviously, she doesn't need them because they could have been here for two years for all I know. Right. 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 I'm, just, I'm getting belligerent. Uh, so, and as I'm hanging on this, so I'm thinking, I'm, and I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm thinking of the meanest possible things I could say to her when she walks through the door because I'm fucking pissed don't you love it when you get to prepare for a fight i yeah, this is oh. my favorite thing as a man ever. i mean i was going to just rip her apart and fucking dance on her bones <laughs> salty her yes what's best in life to crush your enemies and see them driven before you hear the lamentations of their women exactly on yes <laughs> you're about to hear some you looking for lamentations yeah i mean i'm just and i'm trying to think of every mean thing I can think of, right? And to give myself ammunition for this battle that I know is about to start, I count how many dresses I washed and hung. Okay. How many do you think? For me to be this angry about it, how many do you think it is to tip me over the edge? Well, I would have been a little mad just picking up the ball. To say ball, I would think you'd have to have upwards of 10. I'm going to say I'd get angry at 12. You're talking about a building level of hatred. I'm going to say I'm going to say there were 19. I think if Samson and I did this one, 
I Samsonite it? You were way off. <laughs> it was a Swinson, Swanson, the Sam- Samsonite. It was, it was way off. 29 dresses. 29? 29 dresses, right? And so I count that, and that just, I mean, I've, <laughs> I've gone through the fucking roof at this point. So when, you're, when your wife became a nudist, you just thought that was a style choice, not no. the, the laundry issue. No, no, no. She's been wearing clothes, man. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when I count that, I'm like, for her to have 29 dresses that she can just have on the floor and not care about, right? Right. How many dresses does she fucking have that she doesn't even notice 29 gone, man? I'm going to have to say double it. So like, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 50. I'm going to go odd number. I'm going to go 50, 57. Yes. Samson knighted it again. Fuck you. 70 fucking one dresses. Well, I didn't. Out of this, probably just as far as I was off the first 70 time. I don't know. Seventy-one dresses. Seventy-one dresses is a lot of. That's a lot of. That's a lot of. That's just a lot of yeah. fabric. So think I'm about, like, you could insulate your home with like. That. Think, dude, thank <laughs> God, thank God she was at work. If she had been home, oh, it you would have been better bloody. The dresses. <laughs> so, uh, and I realize how he I re- puts the lotion on in the past. <laughs> <laughs> I realize how upset i'm getting about it right right like i feel my butt my face is hot i feel my blood pressure rising and i and i and i i go okay i got it this isn't healthy i gotta step back from this i'm gonna go to smoothie i'm gonna go run for 30 minutes and then i'm gonna reassess okay okay i centered i feel like that is a great idea like the fact that I was able to realize so for, fuck counting to ten, it's a smoothie and a jog. Yeah, and you feel way, but yeah, yeah, gets get you get you right every time. All right. So I uh, I feel real good about myself for thinking about that. I'm like, God, she's married to such a great guy that instead of just taking it satisfying out on her. that rage in me and taking it out, I. I'm gonna. You lived it, right? You I'm, breathed it. I'm gonna do the right thing, so I'm feeling great. It's not. And see, I, Honeybun and I were talking about this the other day. It's not. Well, and then a coworker and I had the conversation too. It's not that you don't let the horrible thought ever enter your mind. The whole point of the horrible thought is so you, you never do the horrible it. deed. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You you think whatever terrible fucking thing you want to about anybody you want to think it about. But that's the whole point of thought. That's the it's the whole point of imagination. Yeah, so um so I'm feeling pretty good about it and after I uh after I cool down, I'm like, okay, I'm still it is still it still bothers me. Yes. Okay. But I'm just not a seething ball of rage at this point. Right. So okay, I'm you know what? I'm going to uh I'm going to come up with some rules like this, this is, this is, this is crazy. It's got to stop. So I think, well, whenever she gets home, I'm going to tell her what happened. Right. And why I was, and why I'm upset about it. Right. And then I'm going to say, Hey, look, I hung 29 of those addresses. Obviously you didn't need them anyway. So I need you to go to the closet and pick out 29 dresses and we'll go give it to charity. Right. Yeah, that's fair. And on top of that, if you want to buy a dress in the future, cool. Whatever you want, but if you bring one home, you have to get rid of two. One in, two out. One in, not a. Yeah, no, because if you if you did one for one, you're not really solving the problem. But one for two means if she wants that dress bad enough to get rid of two dresses, then she's going to wear it more. She'll appreciate it more. Wow. All right. Right. I think I think long term you're going to end up in a Chinese dress like policy, and uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, <laughs> China's short on women. Well, I thought I was doing great. What did you feel bad about? I got a lost generation there. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, she's going to be left with nothing but smocks. All of her dresses are from the 80s or 2000s. <laughs> right. She's got nothing from the 90s. <laughs> That's right. Got oh, nothing man. current. <laughs> you like, put on something sexy. <laughs> so, like, I got, I got nothing. So I'm feeling real good about this. I'm like, and and I'm waiting, you know, I'm, she's going to get home, man. And uh, and I'm thinking, oh, man, what, like how, again, how lucky is she? 
a lucky woman, indeed. I think we all agree She's, on that. Like, like I didn't. Like I worked through my issue. I didn't take it out on her. I, I think I've come up with a pretty reasonable plan. You didn't beat her once. Not once. <laughs> Not once. <laughs> So I'm feeling real good about myself. You didn't even burn her clothes or some crazy shit like that. Yeah, so I That's think I, girl shit. Guys don't do that stuff. So I think I, I was sending you text messages at the time about yeah, it. Many, yes, sir. And uh, and and through that, I'm I'm thinking, okay, she's gonna come through that door, and uh, and I'm like, look, you're buying too many dresses. Like you bought a dress, and I pause. I'm like, wait, when was the last time she bought a dress? And I realized. This wasn't a her problem. This is a me problem. <laughs> I'm buying these fucking dresses. She's not even with me when I'm buying them. We've we've discussed this on the show before. You are a you are a gift giver. You are very much a giver, and in particular, like you, I mean, you do buy her flowers occasionally. You buy her, you know, chocolates and things like that. But mostly, you fucking buy her clothes. Yeah. And I whenever whenever I realized that. It wasn't even her. Like <laughs> this is a problem you've created. The this only is, person I can be <laughs> mad at is me. You're Doctor Frankenstein. Yeah, and and, and I'm the is, monster. This is dress, Dressenstein. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's alive. It's alive. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like yeah. She needs another sundress. <laughs> yes. I don't know what accent that was. I don't know it what that definitely was wasn't fucking German. No. Yeah. Yeah. Something is that better. I don't no, that's know. a little better. All that's right. not very much better. So. So I'm the, I'm the issue. If I'm mad at anybody, it's me. Right. I'm the one buying her dresses, so I couldn't even be mad at her anymore. And she hadn't even made it home yet. <laughs> it's uh, you had a whole little argument all about yes. yourself. The whole day, man, was a fucking struggle. Right. So so it's like your whole life's like a one man show. So I felt like so grown up and such an adult, man. Right. About working through that, not. You know, not doing a, a bonehead thing in the beginning, right? And then, and then it go. And then the day after I realized this, I'm talking to my mother. <laughs> okay. And I'm telling her about it because I'm I'm fucking proud of myself, man. Because I I can have a temper, dude. I can. Yeah, well, uh, you and me both. I, Honey Bun and I were talking about it today. I, there's a there's a rage deep inside me. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I'm feeling pretty. I'm feeling pretty good about this. My mom and I are talking talking it through, and. And then here's the thing is because she says, she says, well, son, you know, it's it's good that you enjoy and like giving your wife gifts. And then I thought, I thought, you know what, mom, that's only part of it. A large part of me buying her these dresses and stuff. Right. Is me going into a boutique with all these women in there <laughs> and I'm the only man. Right. And they look at me like, oh, what a good, like that dude is such a good husband. Like I'm doing this to myself subconsciously on purpose. And then I get to the cash register and the cashiers, you know, I've been in there a couple of times. They know me, right? Yes. So a lady comments and then she says, oh, he does this kind of stuff for his wife all the time. And the lady, the customer's like, oh, so, man, then you get around she of, got herself oh, a good, yes, yeah. it feels so good. It's socially acceptable female attention. Yes, and that's right. And Nobody's going to be mad at you or think you're you're you know sneaking around in any fashion, right? Because the women at the dress store are telling you what a good husband you are and how they how much they wish their husband thought about them like you do. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it nailed it right. So that's really what's at the core of this. That's the kernel of truth. After peeling back all these layers, man. So, and here's the thing: is because whenever you're single, or whenever I was single, I. Dude, I love female attention, man. I was Ugh. I was a man whore, right? It's and then you get married, and it's no longer okay to have that attention. And you get you get so you get. It's not like you don't get attention from your wife. You do. You get a tremendous amount of attention from your wife. But the, from a, for a person, for a person, because I'm assuming the same thing is true for women who who were also social butterflies. Yeah. For someone who's used to attention from multiple people, yes. the fact of the matter is that different people scratch different itches. Yeah, so I don't know if it's an addiction. I don't know what it is. I don't know it's why exactly that's what it is. It's a it's a weakness of your own part. So basically, but, what you're telling me is you were stuck doing a mountain of laundry, the mount mount laundryus, because you're a selfish bastard. Yes, <laughs> that's yeah. what it boils yeah. down yeah. to. Yeah. So and then I, and then I felt real bad. Right, I went from being angry at her. 
to feel like a great husband. Did you go buy her a dress to say I'm sorry? (laughs) (laughs) No. To feeling terrible about the issue, right? And then I was kind of like, man, who, 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 who fucking cares? And she gets a free dress out of it. He, he, let me tell you, here's who, here's who cares. Who cares is the rest of the male population. Because first of all, you make us look bad. Even if I, I can't buy my dress a wife. Uh, I can't buy my dress a wife. <laughs> I can't buy. I just revealed something about myself, didn't I, ladies and gentlemen? This is a real who are these guys. No, I can't buy my wife a dress. For several reasons. First of all, I can't buy my wife a dress because we I had to go to I have to, have to go to Walmart, I think, and I don't think she wants any of their dresses. But even if I had the cash to throw around, I couldn't go buy my wife a dress because I don't fucking know what size she is. They don't make any sense. Women's sizes don't make any goddamn sense at all. I am hey. a thirty-four, and that's because I'm thirty-four inches across. She's a six. What the fuck? What I measured every part of her. None of them are a six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's the. I don't get it either. Shit doesn't make sense to me. But here's here's the thing. It doesn't have to make sense for you to learn it. What you're just saying is rote memory. Why is one plus one two? Well, if I give you a cup and I give you another cup, you can count them and see that it's two. Like it. That math is empirically no, dude. One plus one equals two is a huge fucking equation that took them forever to fucking figure out. Yes, but it's provable no. in the world very simply. Not here proven. is one, no. and here is one, and no. put them together. You, how you many are on the you, table? You would think it's that simple. It's not. I think I think there can be complex math that actually that gets like wishy washy. But that's the high end stuff that the like the astrophysicists do. I don't do that kind of math. I barely <laughs> do the one to one. I have a calculator for that. I do. If it gets if it gets more if the numbers get above seven, then I go right, to my calculator. Is, I don't have to know, like I don't have to know why she's a six. All I have to know is that she is it, a six. Is that sh- that's the number. That's, that's it. the that's, number that you've been given. That's all you got to know. But don't they? Here's the deal, though. It's not that. Here, I'm gonna drop some knowledge, man. Okay. Not all dresses are sized the same. That's way. what I'm saying. Because that's true about pants. Like in one brand of pants, I'm a 34. No, I'm not even talking about that. I'm not even. No, I'm not even talking about that. There's like three different kinds of like. They're small, medium, large, and there's no six, two, four, right? And then there's the odds: six, twelve, eight. But then there's also evens, like fives and sevens. What? Yeah, it's. It's, I'm telling you, it's completely ridiculous. Do they ever go like four six, like kids' clothes do sometimes? Four two six? No, 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 no. Uh, I don't. So here's what I think. But yeah, I but here's the thing: think, is if you're a six in this, you might be a five, or you could be a seven. So you gotta, you have to know. You gotta I, figure it out. I personally think the sizing charts, the like the the what what's that called? The sizeology. Of women's clothing, we'll go with that. I don't think. That's okay, word. I don't think that is either. the 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 way that the Dewey Decimal System of sizing, <laughs> yes, in women's clothing, yes, it would be this this is the the sizey decimal system. Who's, I don't know who's coming who's coming up with that. And here's the thing: is are they? Because you know, back in the day, right? So back in the day, uh, bigger <laughs> women were, bigger women were in style, right? Okay, I'm talking yes. About Fucking centuries ago, because well, not just centuries ago. It means you're wealthy and healthy, and well, even even just forty years ago. I mean, Marilyn Monroe would be right. a large woman by today's size. Bigger size. woman in. So maybe they sized it by which figure they would fuck, hmm. right? So, oh, she's a two. I wouldn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's a two in size, and she's a two in fuckability. I wouldn't fuck that skinny bitch. You're telling me but that the it's size like, charts and it's are... like 10. Oh, that chick's a fucking 10. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wowzers. Two handfuls. Yeah. No, so I don't think that's true. Here's my here's my pitch on it. I believe that the size charts for women's clothing are specifically set up uh, as as like a uh, – it's a Ponzi scheme, man. It's all about – It's first of all, it's about keeping the women in the store because they got to try on every fucking thing because they can't <laughs> trust the, 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 size. the size. And also, we're going to have to buy two or three different things because we got to have something when we give them something that fits. And and I'm not sure if any of these are going to fit, so i got to buy the address and a top and here's a belt because I know the belt will fit. Dude, I get it right every time. Re- well, you, but you're the fucking rain man of women's clothing, though. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's, it's, like, it's, she's, a, she's, a, she's a six, Todd. Definitely thing is, a six, Todd. Is that, is that creepy or it's pervy? It's a four. 
Definitely a four. Yeah, it's a little pervy. Why? It's a little pervy. <laughs> yeah, well, look. I mean, I like, don't know. Here's the thing is, Can I, you call yeah, cup here's, sizes here's, like that? Here's the thing is, now I feel the same way about you. I feel that it's pervy. What? Just the idea of it, but I don't know why. Oh. I don't know why it's pervy. <laughs> Like I'm not doing it for a perfect. Like I'm I'm the one doing this behavior, and it's not for a pervy reason. But I completely understand how if I tell the story, someone thinks that. Okay, I I heard about a guy, and I don't think it was our Walmart, but it was a Walmart. Someone was dressed vaguely like a worker there, was approaching women in the shoe department, asking to help. For with a fitting or whatever, and then when once he had the opportunity, was shoving the foot in, in his mouth and sucking toes. Oh, go tell Seamus that. Go tell Seamus. I don't think that's what it is. I don't remember what the fucking dude's <laughs> name is. Since I'm the one that's I'm got counting. it written down, I'm going to steal it. You mean tell it to Sweeney? Tell it to fucking tell it to Sweeney. Oh, man. Go tell it to Seamus. <laughs> I said tonight at that one. <coughs> my my point was this. Do you think that the guy that likes to suck toes like that? Like, okay, if he's sucking random toes in a Walmart, he doesn't think he's gonna get the foot like he doesn't think he's gonna get the foot in the mouth and she's gonna go, Oh, oh, oh my <laughs> pussy is wet. Oh, give me that cock. He doesn't think he's gonna get to finish it. Like no. so it may be sexual in nature vaguely, but my question is, does he think about sucking toes just like you think about buying dresses? Like, yeah, I feel a little pervy about it, but I don't know why it's pervy. <laughs> no, no, that dude knows. <laughs> tell, tell me he knows. Uh, there's no confusion for yeah, him. Yeah, what about. he's doing is he's he's a uh he's got a photographic memory and he's putting that in the old spank bank. <laughs> okay, he's, he's just more, more, more sucking the toe, yeah, and so then like, he's, that's for later. Yeah, that's what he's going to jerk off to later. So, like, like getting arrested is, is worth it to him if he can get seven toes. <laughs> I got you. It's just about cramming them in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's like this. So it's going to be about in prison, too, cramming it in. <laughs> like, if I could rob a bank, if I could rob, in, if I could rob seven toes worth of banks... I would probably it it would I would probably rob banks and get caught and get out in thirty years and have fucking a billion dollars. Wait, if you could rob banks, I'm repeat the <laughs> repeat the, the setup. So we should use toes as a rating of bad things we would do, and how many times we could get away with it before we got arrested. So if I could rob, okay, seven toes. Worth of banks. So seven banks. Okay. Is that worth it and then getting arrested at the seventh bank? Or is it ten banks? Mm, I still don't follow. I don't want to get arrested. If the, if the end result is that I get arrested, I don't think anything's worth it. I mean, like, saving my children would be worth it. Fighting for my freedom might be worth it. If we lived in a totalitarian state or something. Well, sort. That, like... Like, no personal game to be worth. I don't want to go to prison. I right. would not do well in prison. Be a pussy. No, I'm just saying. I would not. You've seen me. You know me. Hey, you you think live, I'm going to hey do man, well in the hey shower? Man, you can live when you're dead, right? Yeah, except I, I can't live. I, no, no, not with several I penises mean, I mean, impaled it, it, it me. It kind of always ends with us going to prison. It kind of always ends with us going to prison. I'm, I'm pretty sure heaven's got gates, man. No, sir. No, sir. I don't want to go to prison. <laughs> you know what I want to do? What's that? I want to get rich. Oh, yeah. I want to get rich, too. I, good. All right. I'm glad we're both on board for that plan. I got an idea how. I want to be poor. <laughs> I can help you out with that. Yeah. We just play Brewster's Millions, except it's like other guys' thousands, and it only lasts <laughs> about a week. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 should, we should go down to the car lot and we're like we should go down to the car lot and we're like I want to buy a Corvette and we're done <laughs> it's, the, it's the Diet Coke we should Diet Coke every fucking movie <laughs> like we just put out a version just not quite as good <laughs> yeah. like seven pounds we do like three pounds <laughs> three, three pounds uh, seven pounds is the one they like he approaches and changes For, their life right? this isn't 47 Ronin just one Ronin <laughs> uh, two, two, 
two fairly adept sushi uh, chefs. <laughs> two men and a baby. <laughs> um, two men and a 14-year-old. That, that's, yeah, that's, the, a yeah, that's a good one, too. That's Our three men and a 14-year-old. All right, here we go. Uh, we're going to move to, uh, I'm going to call it breaking news. I think that it's a, a potential business plan for us, though. Uh, here's the headline. This comes from Forbes.com. Why Wu-Tang will release just one copy of its secret album. Have you heard about this? No. Okay. Somewhere on the outskirts of Marrakesh, Morocco, inside a vault housed beneath the shadow of the Atlas Mountains, there sits an engraved silver and nickel box with the potential to spawn a shift in the way music is uh, consumed and monetized. The lustrous container was handcrafted over the course of three months by British Moroccan artist Yaha, whose works have been commissioned by royal families and business leaders from around the world. Soon, it will contain a different sort of art piece, the Wu-Tang Clan's double album, The Wu, Once Upon a Time in Shaolin, recorded in secret over the past few years. Like the work of a master impressionist, it will truly be a one of a kind. In lieu of a traditional major label or independent launch, the iconic hip-hop collective will make one and sell just one copy of the album. And similar to a Monet or a Degas, the price tag will be a multi-million dollar figure. Wu-Tang, you so crazy. <laughs> uh, no, that's uh, fucking genius. Because think about this. If you buy it and you have the only copy, here's the thing is, who's to say they're not going to release it digitally? Well, uh, we're going to get to that in a minute. But the but if they don't release it digitally, man, if they destroyed fucking every copy of it but that one and it's like, all right, here you go. And they're willing to take a couple million for it. I'd fucking buy it. One one imagines that it depends on the amount of money that's spent on it. But, like, let's say that, like, well, for instance, they got this idea because Jay-Z's last album was pre-released by Samsung. Like, Samsung paid him, oh, like, yeah, $5 yeah. million, right. dollars and he leaked the album, quote-unquote, yeah. to, like, a million people through a Samsung website. Right. So... If somebody buys it for you know eight or ten million dollars, a company does, then obviously the rights to retransmit this the album would, would be, be included. Yeah, yeah. That the company would be well. Hey, look, we're going to give this away to a bunch of people at least, if not everybody. And then in six months or a year or whatever, you can sell it on iTunes and that'll be fine. What is more interesting though is if what if no company is like if companies are like well, fuck Wu Tang had they're not Jay Z and we're not going to get the splash that we would get blah 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 so we're not going to do it like that but just some guy Jay Z for instance like you know what I'm gonna buy that fucking album I'm gonna pay you five hundred thousand dollars for it and I'm gonna put it on the fucking shelf like a Dega or a Monet and that's the only piece I don't think that's the case at all I think it gets leaked regardless really you think them dudes are gonna be working like. Three multiple years for five hundred grand. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. It's going to get multiple millions of dollars. Um, uh, this is this comes from Robert uh, Rizza, the R Z A Diggs uh, Rizza. Uh, he says we're about to sell an album like nobody else sold it before. Uh, we're about to put out a piece of art like nobody else has done in the history of modern music. We're making a single cell collector's item. This is like somebody having the scepter of an Egyptian king. <laughs> Let's not oversell it there. Yeah. Uh, let me let me suggest this. It would not take a million dollars for you to own a one of a kind episode of Two Guys One Pod. Am I wrong? Would forty dollars get it done, other guy? <laughs> Dude, I'd do it for like five bucks. <laughs> I do a one off episode. I'd do it for some smoothie change. I think, <laughs> yeah, as we've established, smoothie seems to be your happy place. So that might be the. And we've got new veggie smoothies here in yeah, town. Right so on. that's a whole new world. A whole new. Whole New World was Let It Go way before Let It Go was Let It Go. I'm just saying. I agree. So so if you if you look at if you look at the evolution of the female power song in Disney movies, that's not what I was talking about. If you look at what was I talking about? This fucking know, Wu Tang about, thing. About Disney movies, man, let me tell you. Okay then. Hands down, the best comic relief sidekick ever invented are the minions. Better than Donkey, better than Dragon. Uh, Better than Monkey. Who's Monkey? Oh, you're talking about from Aladdin. Yeah, I don't Abu. remember his fucking Abu. Yeah. <laughs> um, Better than that fucking parrot. Uh, the, uh, first of all, several of those weren't Disney movies. Shrek, the, none of the Shrek movies were Disney movies. Okay, best in, in, in an animated in movie. In an animated film. I got gotcha, sure. you, I got gotcha. you. Uh, I don't, hmm. 
the minions are real good. Dude, the minions are fucking fantastic. The minions are real good. I don't know if I'm ready to say best of all time on the okay, cartoon sidekick. Don't. I did. You don't have to. Fair enough. You put it out there. Uh, my point is, I think just like the Wu-Tang, we'd have a sliding scale. So if, if, if the bidder wants to pay $5, then they get exclusivity for a week or so, and then we're going to put it out as a regular episode. If the bidder were to pay $500, or, they'd keep the episode for a while. What if, what if they paid us to not produce content? <laughs> like I hate you motherfuckers so much. Here's five hundred dollars. Stop it for a moment. <laughs> take take a fucking week off. All right? Yeah, I would be like, fuck yeah. How vacation. much vacation? How much? How much would it take for you to take a vacation? Like five hundred dollars. <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You can shut him up for five hundred dollars. Uh, checks payable to two guys one pod at me dot com. You can send us a PayPal. I think that way. <laughs> all right. Hook it up, hook a brother up. All right, Where so yeah, I think I I I think the idea is crazy. I think it's out there, and I love it. I, yeah, I think it's really cool too. All all kidding aside, I think it is an actually really cool idea. And what what strikes me is like, and we've actually discussed this in real life before. It seems like a return to patronage. Like, I mean, that's what it is. Like, you get a patron, and the patron would let the poor people hear the thing that he was pa- like if. If the Queen hired William Shakespeare and his company to come do a show, the Queen wasn't the only person that saw the show. If you're saying I get to be a Medici, I'm fucking for it. <laughs> you are for it, not again it. All right, then. Um, so that's, uh, I, I, I called it working smarter, not harder there from Wu-Tang. Does that also mean, like, if you have the album, they will not tour those songs? You know, that's a good question. I didn't see that in the article. There's an idea, Wu Tang. Less work too. It's a lot though. It's like it's a long. It's like 140 minutes or something. 33 songs, two discs set. Uh, it's a serious article. Um, let's do a let's do a, a little Southern Comfort. Uh, this comes from. Do I get Huff- to guess the state on this one? You do. Right on. Uh, this comes from the Huffington Post. Uh, HuffPost.com. Woman torches car after man refuses to buy her a McFlurry. Oh man, okay, that is that is definitely in a deep South state. Uh, you think so? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're doing the Southern Comfort here, so it's got to be a Southern state. No, but I'm talking like I'm talking about like Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. Okay. Uh, here we go. Ice cream, you scream. We all set cars on fire for ice cream. Uh, witnesses say uh, a woman gave a man's car the old gasoline plus fire combo after he refused to purchase a McFlurry dessert for her at McDonald's. Bystanders watched the unnamed pair as their argument over frozen treats escalated. Um, Something tells us there was a little bit more going on here. This is around 12.30 a.m. Sunday uh, at a McDonald's. Uh, This is from WFTV, they're reporting. Next thing you know, she says, I'm going to blow it up. And we were wondering, what are you going to blow up? Witnesses Sabrina Marie told Action News Jax. Do you you think she thought it was going to be like the movies? Who thought it was going to be like that? Oh, the, the like girl? Like she sticks the rag in the gas tank and lights it on fire and, and it's immediately going to it explodes. Uh, I don't know, because here's what she did. Uh, she got something out of the car that happened to be a bottle, and then she got gasoline from who knows where, Marie explained. Then she poured everything all over it. Next thing you know, there was a match, and it was up in flames. The fire and rescue team arrived to put out the flaming 94 El Dorado. Uh, but by then, the uh, suspect was gone. An investigation into the incident is ongoing. What state do you believe this story took place in? <clears throat> Sticking by its deep south state. All right. I'll toss in a little peppering of Florida because those people are crazy. But I'm going to say Mississippi. It was good that you hedged your bets. Mississippi, not the answer. Deep south state, no, sir. Florida. Ah, of course when it's doubt, Florida. When in doubt, it's always Florida. When in doubt, it's always Florida. Man, okay, can you come up with a better combo than a gasoline plus fire combo? Because uh, that was a terrible piece of writing. Gasoline plus fire. Well, it wasn't my writing. Let no, I see. know. I'm saying we, I'm sure we could come up with a better one. How did they? Hang on a minute. Let's see. Like I would, I would rather him have opened it up with. With uh, a match and gas combo. Uh, I'm trying to see. The exact phrasing was, 
the old gasoline plus fire combo. Yeah, that's that's fucking terrible. Yeah, gas and match. The old gas and match. The old gas and like match if you're gonna combo. Make, if you're gonna make if you're gonna make a pun on yeah, combo, gas and match is the way to go. The old gas and match combo. Right. Uh, how Even about it, like I wish you would uh, like the number six gas and match combo. How about the flaming El Dorado? <laughs> like, what was know. it? The flaming Pinto? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Does it tell what car it is? Yeah, it was an El Dorado or an El Dorado or how you say it. Yeah, that's exactly what. That's a perfect. It's so like you know the. the uh, uh, reporters uh, aren't, you know, I don't know. In, uh, with, McDonald's isn't known with for their frozen side of bitchy. Yeah, McDonald's has been uh, McDonald's has McDonald's has been expanding their frozen treats lately, but no one knew they were uh, expecting a, a a flaming El Dorado on the menu. No, that you see, you fucked it up. Uh, you know, yeah, damn it. All right. Anyway, uh, that's your Southern Comfort this week. You got anything else, sir? Uh no man I well, how well, how are we on time oh we're forty six minutes in we're good All right. I'm about to we, I was gonna uh, do our little plug but before we got the plug we we're gonna tease Ooh, a, little a little mystery. bit more yeah a little bit mm. more mystery uh, we discussed it last week we do have uh, a little something brewing a potential new project how about that uh, it's not gonna be a new episode of this show I'll give you that hint. correct. Would you like? Can you think of a hint that you would like to offer other guys? I'm good. Okay, it's not going to be a new episode of this show. We should have even more info for you, and maybe even a projected date next week. Possibly. There you go. It's coming soon. It's a little more to whet your appetite. Um, we hope that you've enjoyed this show. Two guys one pod dot com is where you can go. Uh, to check out uh, all of our archives, Two Guys, One Podcast. Subscribe to us in iTunes or in Stitcher or whatever your favorite podcast app might be. Tell a friend about us. If you've got Tell buddies, two friends. Indeed. If you've got two friends, well, first of all, if you've got two friends, and congratulations to you, sir. Uh, but if you, do have, <laughs> if you do have two friends and, uh, and you think they would share your comedy sensibilities, then share the show with you. That's the only way we grow. Two Guys, One Podcast. Dot com. If you get a chance, shop through our Amazon links, too. That's a, a great way to support the show as well. And since we're coming up on our 100th episode, um, bow, 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 bow. yeah, we want you to be part of the show. We want a lot of listener mail, so so email us, twoguysonepod at me.com, uh, twoguysonepod at me.com. But also... Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna pull up an episode here because I'm gonna get this fucking phone number and actually give it. I'm gonna start giving it every episode now. Ah, there you go. All right, so you can yes, so you can so hey you man, can email do you think, us. Do you think if um if like fruit you don't eat fruit anyway, so never mind. What? Nothing. What? Nothing. You're asking me a question. and You say I have no frame of reference. Is yeah, that what you're saying? Yeah. So it's pointless. All right then. Uh, so you can email us, twoguysonepod at me.com. But what we'd really love to do is we'd love to have some folks call and tell us uh, happy birthday. Um, or call, to go fuck ourselves. Or go fuck ourselves. That's You know what? That's exactly what, – what there you go. Call and tell us to go fuck ourselves. Say, two guys, one pod, go fuck yourself for your anniversary. 504-613-5635. That's the phone number. 504-613-5635. Call us up and tell us to go fuck ourselves. Uh, we'll play those on our uh, 100th uh, episode, our special anniversary. Two years coming up very, very soon. What's what's the two-year anniversary? You're the, the romance specialist. What's the two-year anniversary? Paper. So I, I'm supposed to give you something with paper? Nah, I don't fucking remember, man. Flower? No, flowers is the fourth. I don't know. I don't remember. Do you, you're Mr. Romance here. You're the you're the guy that remembers your wife's sizes. Exactly, bro. I live in the moment. You you not saying the past. you passed the second year, so you don't remember anymore? That's right. I got you. All right. Fair enough. Uh, let's put a bow on this puppy with a little word from Bob Ross. You can get your a bit of wisdom from Bob at uh, bobrossquotes.com. That's where we did. Here it is. For those of you who may not know who Bob Ross is. I like to leave the mystery, but go ahead. Ah, fuck it. They can Google it. He's a, he's a puffy-haired painter. That's that's the the elevator pitch for Bob Ross. A puffy-haired painter. Puffy-haired peacenik painter. How about that? Peacenik? Yeah. Uh, here's, here's your word from Bob Ross. Decide where your little footy hills live. <laughs> 
It sounds so dirty when you now, say it. Uh, your footy, your little footy heels can live in your closet now that you got all that room you cleaned Dude, out. Ton of fucking room now. We could have a dance party in that closet. <laughs> it's a boy dance party. Boy dance party. <laughs> Oh man! Hey, uh, yeah, we're about to to send you off, but um, check out the song this week, and and but check out the song every week. I don't give you artists that are bad, but this week we're going to do another uh, song from our good buddy Professor Shy Guy. He does the theme song for the show, uh, and we appreciate him for that. He's got a great album out. He actually, this motherfucker is so busy. He's the hardest working man in chip tunes. He put out two albums recently. He's got one that is like thirty little bitty songs all about the movies coming out in 2014. Uh, he, he did it for some uh, uh, contest or something. You can find that at his website. The other album, though, the one that you'll hear from from on this episode, is called Rhythm and Bloops, and it's nothing but covers of R&B music uh, done chiptune style. Great stuff. You've heard No Diggity already. You've heard uh, Do What You Want With My Body. You've heard uh, Poison, I think. Anyway. You... All right, let's close this motherfucker down. All right. Uh, until next week, uh, I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this has been the podcast.
Are we going to promo this dude's whole fucking album? We're not going to do the whole album, but we're, we're going to do several songs over the course of you know several like several weeks. I've put some other albums in there, some other some other artists in there too. I'm mixing it up, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Professor Shy Guy. <laughs> look, look, you did. I'm Professor look, Pod Guy. I'm sure that's going to come across audioly, audioly, like you didn't say that hard at all. <laughs> well, I'm but mixing let me it tell up, you, the fucking hand gestures that gestures that you had going with that didn't make it hard either. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't really exude the anger. <laughs> I know what it was supposed to look like. <laughs> this, is, this is where my little footy heels live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>